Hi, my name is Jeff Seip and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we're really going to focus on how adding small details to your examples can make you more memorable, create more connectivity with your interviewer, and ultimately result in you landing the job. Throughout your example, you might only add five to ten small little details, but those small little details, again, they're making you more memorable. Ultimately, the goal in this video is to create a little separation from your competition. The important item to remember is you really want to find the balance of adding details that are not getting you away from answering the interview question. You really want to focus on answering the specific question that's been asked of you. So hang in there with me to the end. We're going to tackle a behavioral interview question, a specific question, and then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on a situation and an action, and we're going to go what a high-level answer would look like, and then an answer if you provided a little bit more detail. So a common question that I like to ask a lot of my clients pretty much almost every time is, Tell me about a project you were managing where a dispute between stakeholders threatened the success of the project, and what did you do? And so, let's start with the situation. The situation was our lead salesperson and our lead engineer could not agree on an advertising feature that the organization wanted to add to drive revenue to the platform. At the time, we were already a month behind our deadline, and the pressure from executive leadership to move the project to completion had hit a tipping point. This is a good, broad overview. You want to keep your situation short. You really don't want to provide a lot of extraneous detail, too much detail that's just not important. So I have a good baseline and understanding of what the situation was. But let's just go ahead and add a couple of small details and then talk about the impact. The situation was Bob our lead salesperson and one of our most tenured employees, and Jane, our lead engineer and a newer employee to the organization, could not agree on a video advertising feature that would add up to $100 million in revenue for our organization per year. At the time, we were already a month behind our deadline and the pressure from executive leadership, including my boss who was sending me emails at 5 a.m. every day, was really hitting a tipping point and we needed to move forward with the project. So the first thing we did, we gave a name to those employees and added their tenure. Secondly, we added a more specific detail about the advertising platform. And then the third item we added was, we added just this small detail about 5 a.m. emails. And so what's happening in your interviewer's mind is, they have more connectivity to the employees because we've given them a name and now they're kind of understanding and feeling their tenure and the pressures that come with that. They also might be thinking about a male-female dynamic, so that's good as well. They're also picturing not just a generic advertising platform, but video ads, and we're inundated with video ads every day, so there's a good connectivity there. And then we've all received emails outside of hours with pressure to meet a deadline. So a third piece of connectivity by adding that detail. Now let's flip over to an action. And so the first action I took I was to meet with the lead salesperson and meet with the lead engineer separately. Then I got both of them in a room to hash things out. We ordered food and blocked off enough time to come up with a resolution. And after a lot of back and forth, we had a path forward by the end of the day. Now, honestly, this is more detail than most of my clients and most candidates provide when talking about an action of getting two people into a room. But again, let's provide another example where we provide a little bit more detail, some small details. The first action I needed to take was get Bob and Jane in the same conference room. But before taking this step, I chatted with each of them individually to learn more about their specific challenges and if there were any areas where they might be flexible. So based on these findings, I created a deck and got them both to sit in the room, have me go through this deck. Secondly, I had them both go to the whiteboard and talk about challenges and solutions, whiteboard it out, and had each of them practice active listening so they were really hearing the other person. 
We ordered from our favorite pizza place, which definitely helped put them in a really good mood. And then for the last couple hours, we brought in the stakeholders and talked about our plan and made sure that there was good viability for that plan moving forward. And ultimately, we were able to do that and move the project forward. So instantly, you're already so much more connected to Bob and Jane just because they have names and you understand a little bit about their tenure. But really, the naming convention really helps. Um, I've created some really good visuals. So I talked about a deck. I talked about a whiteboard. I even added that active listening piece in there. That's really important. In the first example, I mentioned food. Second example, I mentioned pizza. Pizza is awesome. Why wouldn't we mention pizza, right? Again, a connectivity there. And then lastly, so often when we talk about these meetings, we talk about the salesperson, we talk about the engineer, we talk about um, Bob and Jane, but we don't talk about the other stakeholders. And that's such an important, critical part. There's always other people involved in these larger projects, especially a project for a video advertising platform that's going to drive $100 million in revenue. So just all these items are just added little details, and of course, the amount of specificity that I added in this action, it, it was a lot, right? But I really just want you to think about small details here and there, and how after the interview, if you and the other candidate were pretty much the same, but they talked about a salesperson and an engineer, they talked about a meeting, and you talked about Bob and Jane, and you talked about using visual aids, You'll just be more memorable. And the pizza, of course, is always important. I really hope this helps. It's something that continues to come up with my clients. They're not providing the really small details. And anytime they do, there's an instant uptick on my end because I feel really connected and I'm visualizing them. I hope this video helps. Thanks so much.